Ely Joseph Carden, former Mas French Cat, the 9th of April 1869 to the 6th of May 1951, was an influential French mathematician who did fundamental work in the theory of Lie groups, differential systems, coordinate free geometric formulation of PDEs, and differential geometry. He also made significant contributions to general relativity and indirectly to quantum mechanics. He is widely regarded as one of the greatest mathematicians of the 20th century. Cartan's recognition as a first rate mathematician came to him only in his old age. Before 1930, Henry Poincare and Hermann Weyl were probably the only prominent mathematicians who correctly assessed his uncommon powers and depth. This was due partly to his extreme modesty and partly to the fact that in France the main trend of mathematical research after 1900 was in the field of function theory, but chiefly to his extraordinary originality. It was only after 1930 that a younger generation started to explore the rich treasure of ideas and results that lay buried in his papers. Since then his influence has been steadily increasing, and with the exception of Poincaré and Hilbert, probably no one else has done so much to give the mathematics of 20th century its shape and viewpoints. Life Ely Carton was born 9 April 1869 in the village of Dolomieu, Isseri to Joseph Carton and Anne Cotters Joseph Carton was the village blacksmith. Ely Carton recalled that his childhood had passed under "...blows of the anvil, which started every morning from dawn." and that his mother, during those rare minutes when she was free from taking care of the children and the house, was working with a spinning wheel. Ely had an elder sister Jean Marie 1867 to 1931 who became a dressmaker, a younger brother Leon 1872 to 1956 who became a blacksmith working in his father's smithy, and a younger sister Anna 1878 to 1923 who, partly under Ely's influence, entered École Normale Supérieure as Ely had before and chose the career as a mathematics teacher at Lycée Secondary School. Ely Carton entered an elementary school in Dolomieu and was the best student in the school. One of his teachers, M. Dupuy, recalled, Ely Carton was a shy student, but an unusual light of great intellect was shining in his eyes, and this was combined with an excellent memory. Antonin Dubost, then the representative of Isseri, visited the school and was impressed by Carton's unusual abilities. He recommended Carton to participate in a contest for a scholarship in a lycee. Cardin prepared for the contest under the supervision of M. Dupuy and passed at the age of 10 years. He spent five years 1880 to 1885 at the College of Vienne and then two years 1885 to 1887 at the Lycée of Grenoble. In 1887 he moved to the Lycée Janssen de Sailly in Paris to study sciences for two years, there he met and made friend of his classmate Jean-Baptiste Perrard who later became a famous physicist in France. Cardin enrolled in the École Normale Supérieure in 1888. He attended their lectures by Charles Hermite (1822–1901), Jules Tannery (1848–1910), Gaston Darbo (1842–1917), Paul Apple (1855–1930), Emile Picard (1856–1941), Édouard Gossat (1858–1936), and Henry Poincaré (1854–1912), whose lectures were what Cardin thought most highly of. After graduation from the École Normale Supérieure in 1891, Cardin was drafted into the French Army, where he served one year and attained the rank of sergeant. For next two years 1892 to 1894, Cardin returned to ENS and, following the advice of his classmate Arthur Tress 1868 to 1958, who studied under Sophus Lyre in the years 1888 to 1889, worked on the subject of classification of simple Lie groups, which was started by Wilhelm Killing. In 1892 Lie came to Paris, at the invitation of Darbo and Tannery, and met Cardin for the first time. Cardin defended his dissertation, The Structure of Finite Continuous Groups of Transformations in 1894 in the Faculty of Sciences in the Sorbonne. Between 1894 and 1896 Cardin was a lecturer at the University of Montpellier. During the years 1896 through 1903, he was a lecturer in the Faculty of Sciences at the University of Lyon. In 1903, while in Lyons, Cardin married Marie-Louise Bianconi .At the same year, Cardin became a professor in the Faculty of Sciences at the University of Nancy. 
In 1904, Carton's first son, Henry Carton, who later became an influential mathematician, was born. In 1906, another son, Jean Carton, who became a composer, was born. In 1909, Carton moved his family to Paris and worked as a lecturer in the Faculty of Sciences in the Sorbonne. In 1912 Carton became professor there, based on the reference he received from Poincaré. He remained in Sorbonne until his retirement in 1940 and spent the last years of his life teaching mathematics at the École Normale Supérieure for Girls. In 1921 he became a foreign member of the Polish Academy of Learning and in 1937 a foreign member of the Royal Netherlands Academy of Arts and Sciences. In 1938 he participated in the International Committee composed to organize the International Congresses for the Unity of Science. He died in 1951 in Paris after a long illness. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Work. In the Travaux, Carton breaks down his work into 15 areas. Using modern terminology, they are Lie theory Representations of Lie groups Hypercomplex numbers, division algebras Systems of PDEs, Cardan-Carlo theorem Theory of equivalence Integrable systems, theory of prolongation and systems in involution Infinite dimensional groups and pseudogroups Differential geometry and moving frames Generalized spaces with structure groups and connections, Cartan connection, holonomy, weyl tensor, geometry and topology of Lie groups, Riemannian geometry, symmetric spaces, topology of compact groups and their homogeneous spaces, integral invariance and classical mechanics, relativity, Spinoz Cartan's mathematical work can be described as the development of analysis on differentiable manifolds, which many now consider the central and most vital part of modern mathematics and which he was foremost in shaping and advancing. This field centers on Lie groups, partial differential systems, and differential geometry. These, chiefly through Cartan's contributions, are now closely interwoven and constitute a unified and powerful tool. Topic. Lie groups Cardin was practically alone in the field of Lie groups for the 30 years after his dissertation. Lie had considered these groups chiefly as systems of analytic transformations of an analytic manifold, depending analytically on a finite number of parameters. A very fruitful approach to the study of these groups was opened in 1888 when Wilhelm Killing systematically started to study the group in itself, independent of its possible actions on other manifolds. At that time and until 1920, only local properties were considered, so the main object of study for Killing was the Lie algebra of the group, which exactly reflects the local properties in purely algebraic terms. Killing's great achievement was the determination of all simple complex Lie algebras. His proofs, however, were often defective, and Carton's thesis was devoted mainly to giving a rigorous foundation to the local theory and to proving the existence of the exceptional Lie algebras belonging to each of the types of simple complex Lie algebras that Killing had shown to be possible. Later Cardin completed the local theory by explicitly solving two fundamental problems, for which he had to develop entirely new methods, the classification of simple real Lie algebras and the determination of all irreducible linear representations of simple Lie algebras, by means of the notion of weight of a representation, which he introduced for that purpose. It was in the process of determining the linear representations of the orthogonal groups that Cardin discovered in 1913 the spinners, which later played such an important role in quantum mechanics. After 1925 Cardin grew more and more interested in topological questions. Spurred by Whale's brilliant results on compact groups, he developed new methods for the study of global properties of Lie groups, in particular he showed that topologically a connected Lie group is a product of a Euclidean space and a compact group, and for compact Lie groups he discovered that the possible fundamental groups of the underlying manifold can be read from the structure of the Lie algebra of the group. Finally, he outlined a method of determining the Betty numbers of compact Lie groups, again reducing the problem to an algebraic question on their Lie algebras, which has since been completely solved. Lie pseudogroups 
After solving the problem of the structure of Lie groups which Cartan following Lie called finite continuous groups or finite transformation groups, Cartan posed the similar problem for infinite continuous groups which are now called Lie pseudogroups, an infinite dimensional analog of Lie groups. There are other infinite generalizations of Lie groups. The Lie pseudogroup considered by Cartan is a set of transformations between subsets of a space that contains the identical transformation and possesses the property that the result of composition of two transformations in this set whenever this is possible belongs to the same set. Since the composition of two transformations is not always possible, the set of transformations is not a group but a groupoid in modern terminology, thus the name pseudogroup. Cartan considered only those transformations of manifolds for which there is no subdivision of manifolds into the classes transposed by the transformations under consideration. Such pseudogroups of transformations are called primitive. Cartan showed that every infinite dimensional primitive pseudogroup of complex analytic transformations belongs to one of the six classes. 1. The pseudogroup of all analytic transformations of n complex variables. 2. The pseudogroup of all analytic transformations of n complex variables with a constant Jacobian, i.e., transformations that multiply all volumes by the same complex number. 3. The pseudogroup of all analytic transformations of n complex variables whose Jacobian is equal to 1, i.e., transformations that preserve volume. Volumes. 4. The pseudogroup of all analytic transformations of 2n greater than 4 complex variables that preserve a certain double integral, the symplectic pseudogroup. 5. The pseudogroup of all analytic transformations of 2n greater than 4 complex variables that multiply the above mentioned double integral by a complex function. 6. The pseudogroup of all analytic transformations of 2n plus 1 complex variables that multiply a certain form by a complex function, the contact pseudogroup. There are similar classes of pseudogroups for primitive pseudogroups of real transformations defined by analytic functions of real variables. Topic: Differential systems. Cartan's methods in the theory of differential systems are perhaps his most profound achievement. Breaking with tradition, he sought from the start to formulate and solve the problems in a completely invariant fashion, independent of any particular choice of variables and unknown functions. He thus was able for the first time to give a precise definition of what is a general solution of an arbitrary differential system. His next step was to try to determine all singular solutions as well, by a method of prolongation. That consists in adjoining new unknowns and new equations to the given system in such a way that any singular solution of the original system becomes a general solution of the new system. Although Cardin showed that in every example which he treated his method led to the complete determination of all singular solutions, he did not succeed in proving in general that this would always be the case for an arbitrary system. Such a proof was obtained in 1955 by Masatek Kuranishi. Cardin's chief tool was the calculus of exterior differential forms, which he helped to create and develop in the ten years following his thesis, and then proceeded to apply with extraordinary virtuosity to the most varied problems in differential geometry, lie groups, analytical dynamics, and general relativity. He discussed a large number of examples, treating them in an extremely elliptic style that was made possible only by his uncanny algebraic and geometric insight. Topic. Differential geometry Cartan's contributions to differential geometry are no less impressive, and it may be said that he revitalized the whole subject, for the initial work of Riemann and Darbo was being lost in dreary computations and minor results, much as had happened to elementary geometry and invariant theory a generation earlier. His guiding principle was a considerable extension of the method of moving frames of Darbo and Riborka, to which he gave a tremendous flexibility and power, far beyond anything that had been done in classical differential geometry. In modern terms, the method consists in associating to a fiber bundle E the principal fiber bundle having the same base and having at each point of the base a fiber equal to the group that acts on the fiber of E at the same point. If E is the tangent bundle over the base which since lie was essentially known as the manifold of contact elements. The corresponding group is the general linear group or the orthogonal group in classical Euclidean or Riemannian geometry. Cartan's ability to handle many other types of fibers and groups allows one to credit him with the first general idea of a fiber bundle, although he never defined it explicitly. 
This concept has become one of the most important in all fields of modern mathematics, chiefly in global differential geometry and in algebraic and differential topology. Cardan used it to formulate his definition of a connection, which is now used universally and has superseded previous attempts by several geometers, made after 1917, to find a type of geometry more general than the Riemannian model and perhaps better adapted to a description of the universe along the lines of general relativity. Cardan showed how to use his concept of connection to obtain a much more elegant and simple presentation of Riemannian geometry. His chief contribution to the latter, however, was the discovery and study of the symmetric Riemann spaces, one of the few instances in which the initiator of a mathematical theory was also the one who brought it to its completion. Symmetric Riemann spaces may be defined in various ways, the simplest of which postulates the existence around each point of the space of a symmetry that is involutive, leaves the point fixed, and preserves distances. The unexpected fact discovered by Cartan is that it is possible to give a complete description of these spaces by means of the classification of the simple Lie groups. It should therefore not be surprising that in various areas of mathematics, such as automorphic functions and analytic number theory, apparently far removed from differential geometry, these spaces are playing a part that is becoming increasingly important. Topic. Alternative theory to general relativity Cartan created a competitor theory of gravity, see alternatives to general relativity, also Einstein-Cartan theory. Topic. Publications Cartan's papers have been collected in his oeuvres completes, six vols. Paris, 1952 to 1955. Two excellent obituary notices are S. S. Chern and C. Chevalier in Bulletin of the American Mathematical Society, 58, 1952, and J. H. C. Whitehead in obituary notices of the Royal Society, 1952. Topic. See also. List of things named after Ely Cartan. Integrability conditions for differential systems Cat K space Einstein – Cartan theory <laughs>